Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. And she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, the main thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You may be seated. Wisdom is one of the spiritual gifts that is given, imparted to people. You have to pray for that gift like you pray for any other gift. It is the first gift in the list of the spiritual gifts. And it's the highest gift of the Holy Spirit. The highest gift. Because it is the perfection of faith. Through wisdom, we come to value properly, properly those things which we believe through faith. Understanding is the second gift of the Holy Spirit. Beyond, behind that is only wisdom. Wisdom is listed first as the principal thing. And wisdom follows, um, uh, understanding follows wisdom. Understanding differs from wisdom. In that wisdom is the desire to contemplate the things of God. Understanding gives one deeper insight into the meaning of Scripture, the truths of God's Word. Understanding imparts a sense of confidence and certainty in our belief. Understanding grasp takes hold of the reality of heaven and our communion with God. And understanding reveals how the truths of faith serve as standards for human action. Wisdom, Solomon says, is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all of your getting, get understanding. For most Westerners, we in the United States, life is about acquiring, accumulating things. We spend most of our working hours working to earn money. To buy things. And then a lot of the rest of the time is spent thinking about things we want to buy. As well as buying those things. Even homeless people seem to spend an inordinate amount of time collecting things which they push around in their carts. It seems perfectly natural to collect things for the future. Just like squirrels, even if we don't really need them. Just like squirrels, you're collecting and gathering stuff and they always get more than they need even if they don't need them. Many times our drive, our uh, uh, impulse 
compulsiveness to get things goes beyond reason and we collect just for the sake of collecting. Does that sound familiar to some of us? The wealthy collect homes, cars, and jewels. The geek collects gadgets and machines. The average person collects all sorts of things, including clothes he may never wear or she. And dozens of other bits and bobs with which he or she fills their home, garage, and storeroom. In addition to the stuff that we accumulate, others accumulate friends, information, experiences, and knowledge. It seems to be human to collect, to get, to acquire, to purchase and lay hold of all sorts of things, even if we don't need them. We measure our achievements, success, and worth by what we have been able to get or acquire. Even toddlers who can barely walk know how to hold on to what they have while at the same time, grabbing what their friends or their siblings has. Solomon was probably one of the greatest getters of all times. He, uh, because he asked God for a request that was not selfish. Solomon could have asked for jewels. He could have asked for fame. He could have asked for fortune. He could have asked for wealth. He could have asked for long life. His request was to give him knowledge to govern and to help ensure the well-being of God's people. To help his father David, the king, to be a good king. And Solomon told him, uh, God told Solomon, because your request was not selfish, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you things, what you asked for. And I'm going to go beyond your expectations. So he gave Solomon wisdom. The wisest man the world has ever known. Solomon collected houses. He collected gold, fame, friends, influence, wives, children. He knew how to get things, and it was he who said, in all of your getting, ma'am, get understanding. That may sound a little confusing to us. If wisdom is the principal thing, the main thing, what do I need with understanding? Understanding gives us the ability to have insight in what we know, know from wisdom, from knowledge. I know these lights are burning in this sanctuary this morning. We all know that. But we don't know all the things that take place from the bulbs of this light all the way back to the panel downstairs from to outside to the electric wires that runs along the street to the power stations that transform us all the way back to what manufactures our electricity. So understanding is the ability to know how these things work. Not just that, I just gave that as an example. So Solomon said, get wisdom. But make sure you get understanding so you will have the ability to understand the things that God has given you as wisdom so you can understand the finer details 
of those things. Solomon knew how to get things. He said, get understanding. There's nothing more important to get than understanding. It is free. Yet very few ever get it. Yes, we will go to the ends of the earth to get all sorts of trinkets that are of lesser importance. And we will pay enormous sums of money for those things. But the most important and the most valuable thing to get is truth. And very few bother with it. The first diamond that was discovered in South Africa, the person that discovered it didn't know it was a diamond. It was a young person, a farm boy, who picked it up and looked and took it home for his sisters to play with. True story. He did not have a clue that what he had picked up was worth a lot and that people would come from all over the world to find what he thought was a stone. In the same way, we need to understand. Amen. Understanding is freely available. Wisdom is freely available. Understanding is freely available. It's one of the gifts. They are two of the gifts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yet we throw understanding away without realizing that what we have is worth more than anything in life. Job says that a man Amen. That man in general, the average man, does not know the value of understanding. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. That's a happy man. And the man who gains understanding. Amen. That's a happy man. For her proceeds, her benefits, are better than the profits of silver and her pain than fine gold. Wisdom and understanding, amen, praise the Lord, is more valuable than we ever know. Praise our Lord. Therefore, Solomon, when he first came to the throne, when he became king, he prayed, Therefore, give to your servant understanding. He could have asked for anything in the world, but his request was unselfish. Give your servant a heart of understanding to judge your people. To tell them right from wrong and how they ought to live and what the word of God requires. That I may discern between good and evil as well. Show me, give me an understanding heart. That needs to be our prayer today. It is interesting, of course, to note that Solomon asked for a heart of attitude and understanding. Understanding is an attitude. The wise and the fool both see the same situation or go through the same experiences in life. And one will gain understanding from it while the other will get nothing. Two people will look at a new machine, the same machine. One will admire how the thing looks and even appreciate what it is able to do. But the other will try to understand 
how it works. See the difference? That keen sense of knowledge, of knowing about something, not just knowing that the world exists, but what brought it into existence? Who brought it into existence? Who created the universe? It's a difference in knowing something exists and knowing something about what exists. That's the difference. Amen. So when people look at things, they come away with different perspectives. Thus we need to look at the scripture and look at life's experiences and not just enjoy and appreciate them. We need to understand them and especially understand how they apply to our lives and how we can learn from them and live them out in our lives. Understanding is more than knowledge. Many people have education, knowledge, and information, but they have no understanding. The circus has monkeys that ride bicycles, but the monkey has no idea how the wheel, the pedals, or any other part of the bicycle works. He just knows how to get on it and pedal it. But he doesn't understand how it works. He does not even understand that if the chain comes off, it won't work. Many people are able to stay on top of life, but they do not have the faintest idea what it is all about, what life is all about. David says, do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding. The ability to understand is exactly the thing that makes the difference between plants and animals. Men, women, humankind has, can have a gift of understanding. Understanding heart. We have the gift of wisdom if the Spirit imparts it to us. The thing that helps to differentiate humankind from the animal world is our conscience. Animals are controlled by instinct. They do what they do instinctively. We are controlled by the will of God if we follow and obey the will of God. And God gives us consciences to help God and direct our paths and decisions. Sadly, even some Christians are like monkeys in the circus. They go through the motions. They go to church. They read the Bible and they pray. But they have no understanding. They not, do not understand what God is trying to do in their lives. They do not understand the meaning of the scripture. They can read it, but they don't have an understanding for it. They do not understand how their actions affect others. And they do not understand why various things happen in their lives. In a sense, they are like monkeys or a horse. They have life and they are able to draw, to, to, to do, I'm sorry, to do a few things. But they have no clue as to what it is all about. The Ethiopian was a devout man. Devout. And he was even reading the scriptures, but he had no clue what he was reading or the meaning of the words on the page. 
Neither did he understand what the Passover was all about. Even though he had traveled many miles to attend the feast in Jerusalem, he could read the words and even ask some good questions. But he did not understand. Fortunately, he wanted to understand. So he grabbed hold of the opportunity. And he conversed with Philip. And Philip offered him the opportunity to learn. As believers, we need to pursue understanding above all else. Wisdom is the principal thing. But then we need to ask God for understanding. Second only to wisdom. Yes, we want to get things. But in all of our getting, we need to get understanding. We must rise above the mindless, the mechanical religion that is practiced by so many. They just do things religiously and don't know the rationale as to why. Whether the scriptures specify it, command it, whether it's just a passing fast, whether it's man's interpretation of God's word, they just follow a mechanical religion that is practiced by so many. Getting understanding, beginning with asking the right questions about what the Lord is trying to teach us, how the Bible applies to our daily living and how we can live a life of obedience to his perfect will should be our goal. Let's pray like Job prayed. He said, teach me and I will hold my tongue. Job wanted God to instruct him, show him, reveal to him, show me your inner thoughts, give me an understanding of how to hold, to control, to keep my tongue in subjection. Cause me, allow me to understand. Give me an understanding. A clear knowledge, a clear re re a revelation wherein I have earth. Show me my error. And let's pray also the prayer with David. David said in Psalms 119 and 144, he said to God, give me understanding and I shall live. David was king at the time. And Solomon was asking for, uh, Solomon was king and he asked God for a heart of wisdom and understanding and knowledge. I close with a verse, a portion of the verse again, a verse again from Proverbs 4 three through seven. In all of our getting, get understanding.